a warm greeting. Today is Saturday, September 3, 2023. I am the meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 7 p.m. local time in the Eastern Caribbean, where we continue to monitor the evolution of Invest 95. As we can see in the visible satellite image, Invest 95 is currently located southwest of the Cape Verde Islands, and during today, we have observed that it has continued its cyclonic organization process. In fact, in this animation, you can clearly see that it has very good rotation, and over the next few days, it should become a tropical depression as it moves west-northwest. However, it will likely take another 36 to 48 hours for this system to acquire enough organization and be classified as a tropical depression. And although it has very good rotation, as you can see in the infrared satellite image, it still does not have a compact area of thunderstorms near the center of circulation. It still needs to continue improving its structure to be considered a tropical cyclone. At 2 p.m., the National Hurricane Center increased the chances of it becoming a tropical depression to 90% as it moves west-northwest, and it is projected to pass very close to the northeastern Caribbean. Therefore, we continue to monitor its evolution. The chances of it becoming a tropical depression in the next 48 hours have increased to 50%, and it's very likely that in the 8 p.m. update from the National Hurricane Center, they will increase to 60%. In the afternoon today, there haven't been many changes in the forecast. It is still projected to pass just northeast of the Caribbean during the next weekend, as specialized trajectory models predict. You can see that it is projected to have a westward trajectory over the next 24 hours, and starting tomorrow night, it should begin to turn more west-northwest. There is a strong consensus that it should pass between 100 to 200 miles northeast of the Lesser Antilles Islands. However, it will pass through this region in approximately 6 days, so the margin of error is quite high, and that's why we must remain vigilant, especially for the islands north of the Lesser Antilles, the Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. It will be crucial to observe if it starts to turn west-northwest from Tuesday onwards. Meanwhile, it is projected that the movement will continue westward over the next 24 hours, as it has been since it left Africa. As Invest 95 continues its path through the tropical Atlantic, you can see that sea surface temperatures are increasing. This will allow it to continue organizing and strengthening as it approaches the northeastern Caribbean. The models continue to predict extremely favorable conditions for rapid strengthening starting next weekend when it is crossing just north of the Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico. This can be seen in this image, where on Saturday, Hurricane Lee is anticipated to have good ventilation in all quadrants of its circulation at high levels of the atmosphere. This is why rapid strengthening is expected on Saturday or Sunday as it approaches the eastern Bahamas. Due to these warm temperatures and favorable atmospheric conditions, intensity models continue to be very aggressive. Some of them in the afternoon today have a Category 4 or Category 5 hurricane in approximately 5 days. This is one of the main concerns for the northeastern Caribbean. Any deviation in a closer trajectory would pose a greater risk to some Caribbean islands. At least the consensus continues to indicate that it should pass northeast of the Caribbean. Let's see what the global model's forecasts show. Let's start with the GFS model. The American model develops a tropical depression during the late hours of Tuesday when Invest 95 is near longitude 42 degrees west. The place and date at which it becomes a tropical depression will have significant long-term effects, whether it passes northeast of the Caribbean or a bit closer. However, with the GFS model's projection, which suggests it would take approximately two to three days to become a tropical cyclone, this model maintains the trajectory west-northwest while strengthening. In its latest run this afternoon, it has the future Hurricane Lee passing between 100 to 150 miles northeast of the Virgin Islands. This is extremely close to Puerto Rico and some of the Lesser Antilles Islands, so it's important for us to remain attentive to any changes that may arise in the forecast over the next few days. Then, between Sunday and Tuesday, you can see the GFS model with optimal conditions for strengthening has a Category 3 hurricane moving just north of the eastern Bahamas. Now, let's compare the forecast of the European model. Unlike the GFS model, the European model develops a tropical depression during the late hours of Monday near longitude 38 degrees west. Comparatively, you can see that the European model envisions the development of a tropical depression a bit further east compared to the GFS model. Under the European model's scenario, where we could have a tropical depression during the late hours of Monday, it projects that it will continue its west-northwest movement while strengthening. In the latest run, it has this system passing about 200 to 250 miles northeast of the Lesser Antilles. We hope that the European model's forecast is correct. One positive aspect is that it has been very consistent with this forecast, which increases confidence in this solution. Also, note that, like the GFS model, it rapidly strengthens the future Hurricane Lee, 
having it reach Category 3 or Category 4. The difference we see between the European model, which develops a tropical depression in the next 36 hours, and the GFS model, which does so a bit further west, will be something we closely analyze in the coming days. For example, with the GFS model's forecast, it anticipates the formation of a tropical depression near longitude 40 degrees west. This could take this disturbance very close to the northeast of the Caribbean. Although it's important to see that many members have a trajectory slightly further west, which could pose a greater risk to the northern Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico, and even the eastern Dominican Republic and the eastern Bahamas. Meanwhile, most members continue to forecast a trajectory passing well northeast of the Caribbean. As this southward trajectory continues to be a possibility, it's the main reason why I ask you to remain vigilant in the Caribbean region. In contrast, the European model has the development of a tropical depression around longitude 35 degrees west. Under this scenario, it would allow the cyclone to move more to the northwest. You can see that basically all members of the European model have the future Hurricane Lee passing at a safe distance from the northeastern Caribbean, just like the operational model. The European model members have been very consistent with this forecast, unlike the GFS model, where we've seen quite a few changes in recent days. Again, this gives us more confidence in the European model's forecast than the American model's forecast. Let's take a closer look at where the center of circulation could pass according to different global models. Here we have the wind gust projection according to the GFS model, with the center of circulation of a tropical storm just northeast of the Caribbean during Saturday night, about 75 miles northeast of the Virgin Islands. Additionally, we have the European model passing the system as a powerful Category 4 hurricane between 200 to 250 miles northeast of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. This projection would be for Sunday afternoon. We also have the UK model, which has a Category 1 hurricane passing about 150 miles northeast of the Lesser Antilles during Saturday night. The German model also has a tropical storm passing between 25 to 50 miles northeast of the Lesser Antilles during Saturday afternoon. Finally, the Canadian model's projection has a Category 2 hurricane passing approximately 75 miles northeast of the Lesser Antilles during Saturday night. I believe the consensus is quite clear. The center of circulation of the future Hurricane Lee is forecasted to pass between 100 to 200 miles northeast of the Caribbean, but close enough for us to continue monitoring its evolution. Again, remember that the key will be to know exactly where a tropical depression forms. If it forms further east in the next 36 hours, it may possibly take the trajectory indicated by the European model. But if it takes two to three days to form a tropical depression and forms further west, it could then take a trajectory much closer to the northeastern Caribbean. The next two to three days will be crucial for the future of this tropical cyclone. Well, with this, I bid farewell. We will be attentive to the 8 p.m. bulletin from the National Hurricane Center. Tomorrow morning, on Monday, I will record a new update to discuss any changes that have arisen in this forecast. I hope you all have an excellent night, and until then, goodbye.